Hello, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. Let's talk with everyone, shall we? Hello, my dear. So, you unlocked the Necromancy of Fae. Did you find what, what you were looking for? Yes. No. I'm not sure. It is full of terrible secrets, including Cazador's bloody right to profane ascension. But it told me nothing new. <laughs> then again, it was filled with otherworldly power, which I am more than happy to wield to my advantage. Hmm. Dame Aelin has little to feel sorry about. The Roacan would have inflicted a far worse fate on her given the chance. That's true. I need a moment for the two of I us. I don't get it. What's got Dame Aelin so down? I, for one, am delighted the Roacan got what was coming to him. As I am. But Dame Aelin has endured a great deal. She must be tired of killing evildoers. I don't know. Isn't that what a paladin of Saluna does? <sighs> Hope that good old Aelin holy fervor returns to her soon. I don't like to see her looking so... lost. Um, El Minister? No time to talk, I'm afraid. Expecting someone. What? Fate spins along as it should. Dost thou require a new ally? Or mayhaps a resurrection instead? Where's Arabella gone? The girl has left to hew her own path. She left behind a letter, as thou doth know. Hast thou other business? No, thank you. Yeah, uh, Asaren has the letter. Well, I hope, aside from the obvious. Mm. Let's talk. Okay, nothing new. Oak Father, preserve you. On my way. Oh, Aelin isn't back. Yet. Interesting. Hear me. Protect the woman we both love so very dearly. Do you need to speak with him as a kid? Soldier. Really? 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 Oh, fine. Yes? With. No. Elminster. Oh, hello, my boy. No, don't mind me. I'm uh, just enjoying a lungful of Baldurian air. <laughs> yes, a distinctive aroma, though perhaps not one worthy of bottling. I hear you've been browsing in the most esteemed of emporiums, sorcerous sundries. <laughs> Uh, indulge my curiosity. What wonders did you discover there? You don't seem or all that surprised to see Gale alive and well. I trusted he would be sensible enough to exercise caution in this matter and to seek the truth. By now, you are aware of the evil we are up against. Cassos, this pestilent crown, the very tool with which its eponymous creator unmade an empire and magic itself. Perhaps now you understand what is at stake here, my boy. Though what Mr. asked of you was extreme, it was not without merit, nor demanded lightly. 
What are you saying? Or rather, what are you not saying? Mistra knows you defied her, Gail. Well, of course she knows. She's Mistra. She bids you come to her holy shrine in the Stormshore Tabernacle. There, she will grant you an audience at last. You really think Mistra will be willing to hear Gale out? I see remaining optimistic is my duty. Especially when I'm not the one being asked to do the seemingly impossible. Trust in yourself. Trust in the weave. If you are willing, trust in Mistra. There is a conclusion yet to be written in this sorry tale, Gale of Waterdeep. And yours is the quill that will write it. Well, poof, he's gone. Okay, but for now, can I go to sleep? And where can I go to sleep? Oh, right. Um, I need to rest. We all need to rest. Did I forget about something? You've heard of such devils. Sisters of justice. Adjudicators of diabolical contracts and bargains. Holy hells. Just what are you up to? I come to bargain. The hells demand witness. Enough, Mizora. Where is my father? How do I save him? How else? We bargain. Sisters. Infernos contractos te vocamos. Infernos contractos te vocamos. Infernos contractos te vocamos. Your contract, Will. Signed in blood, forged in fire, bound in bone, but not unbreakable. What are you proposing? A life for a life. No contract is ended without sacrifice. The cost must be paid. Will Ravenguard, a choice is before you. Option one, I show you the way to your father. I guarantee him no harm except that from you and your allies. And you pledge your soul to me and the Archdevil Zariel in a pact eternal. Option two, I break your pact and you are freed from your duty. Your father dies by his enemy's hand, and Baldur's Gate loses its greatest champion. Name your sacrifice. Bloody Zariel! I won't let her take Will! Silence, Karlak! Mizora! You asshole! Choose! What will happen to Will's powers if he breaks the pact? Addendum F. The Absolute must be avenged for the Soulbinder's detention at Moonrise. 
The soul bearer retains his gifts until such time as the absolute is slain. He's always been doing what's right for the father, for the city. Why? How is that the right thing? Tell me. How is that the right thing? Break the fact. You deserve your freedom. You damned wretch! Father. Well, everyone disapproves. Do it. Break the pact. Fiat Ita. Fiat Ita. Anima ad beator. We will save him. I'll try. Didn't think you had it in you. <laughs> Seems my boy's all grown up. And don't go fussing about your father. You made your choice. You knew the terms. You know what? I think I'll stick around. Not for the greater good, you understand. Just for the entertainment. Just wait until I stick something in you. Something sharp. Little Will's all grown up. I can't wait to see what trouble he gets into. You forced Will to make an impossible choice. Impossible? My bargain was uncommonly reasonable. A single soul for the return of Baldur's Gate's most beloved duke. A real bargain, I should think. I never thought the legendary Blade of Frontiers would surrender his father for freedom. Not very valorous, if you ask me. But what does a mean old devil like me know about heroes? What can you tell me about the house? The nine hells of Beator. Each its own domain, each with its own archdevil to rule it. I call the first hell my home, Avernus, my mistress Zariel's realm, a torrid battleground split by the bloody waters of the Styx. How I adore it, the delicious agony of it all. The other eight, well, they are pleasures unto themselves. Perhaps I'll show you myself, if I deem you worthy. Even killing her won't make any good, she will just go back to Avernus. You never told me how the Absolutists captured you. Correct, I didn't. If you must know, I was scouting the cultists on behalf of Zariel. But those cursed shadows were thick enough to fell even a half-fiend. I woke in that damned pod. It kept my body sealed and my most powerful magic silenced. But a brave, kind, benevolent soul set me free. Gallantry isn't dead, after all. You left Karlak alone. Didn't you want her dead? What changed? You are an inquisitive one. I'd have thought you'd figured by now. Zariel found new use for an old battle axe. The dead three in that bulging brain of theirs are a threat to more than this trifling city, you know. Savor her company. Who's to say when Zariel might change her mind? My mistress can be so capricious. I don't get it. If Will isn't your warlock, why stick around and give him power? Just because he's not my pet doesn't mean he's not useful. The Absolutists worked a number on me at Moonrise. And you're the best hope I've got at payback. No one crosses the Hell's children without getting scorched. 
If you're going to be staying, I need something in return. Why? I'm supplying Will with every scrap of his infernal power. I've paid my dues many times over. I tell you what. When the time comes to squish that big baddie of a brain, I'll lend you a hand. Mm. Older oh, his oh, cutie. Gods, I spent seven years choked by Mazora's leash, and I spent seven years hoping to break free. I never knew freedom could taste so bittersweet. You are own your own men now, Will. It's better this way. I have to believe that. I'm not the Hell's puppet in life, nor its warrior in death. The blade will be guiding his own hand, but freedom will be paid in my father's blood. Tomorrow, I celebrate my gain. Today, I mourn my loss. A moment passes. In the stillness, you find a mote of tranquility. The Raven God name now lives solely with me. I will make it count for something. Your father's not dead yet. Maybe there's a way to save him. I signed his life away before the Hell's witnesses. It would be easier to drink the sticks down to the last drop than to alter his fate. I'd be a fool to wish otherwise. What's our next step then? We obtain the final two nether stones and take back our minds. And the city from the brain. Hmm. Go on then. Do you have anything else to talk about? No. Okay. Where can I sleep? Because when it comes to. Oh. Don't we have any bigger ones? I don't want to sleep with those two here. Mm. I'll give it a shot. Yeah, we haven't slept yet. Oh. Mm, yeah, let's go to sleep. Hmm? Since you killed Catherick and took his netherstone, the Chosen's control of the brain has been... brittle. Its rebellion against Orin and Gortash has been fierce, even as it executes their final orders. Once those orders are complete, there is a good chance it will break free. You feel the Emperor's fear as if it were your own. An elder brain enslaved is one thing. An elder brain unleashed will be the end of everything. Beautiful, isn't it? The mighty Prince Orpheus, contained in submissive slumber. Come. You may as well sit a while. Now that you are here, your company isn't unwelcome. What are you doing? Trying to guard us. The brain is restless, but I am distracted, and my lack of focus is endangering us. I'm haunted by memories. They are relentless. I can think of nothing. No one else. The Lynn, is it? The Duke that's dead? The very same. Duke Stelmay. As she was known in Baldur's Gate. You thought you were my first ally. 
Far from it. I have long sought the allyship of others. It is the only way to succeed. Though my relationship with Berlin was different from my relationship with you. How so? In life, she was my business partner. Back when we ran the Knights of the Shield. A difficult task for a mind flayer. Duke Stelmane trusted me, and the city trusted her. I conceived the plot, but Berlin took center stage. It was she who met with the merchants, politicians, and patriarchs. It was she who negotiated deals and signed off on agreements. Her rooms played host to the most important conversations in the city. Together, we brought order to chaos. At its height, everything that happened in that city went through the shield. Through us. I could not have done any of it without her. Just as I cannot do any of this without you. But now, she is gone. Do you need a hug? I appreciate the offer, but I don't think it will help. What I feel is deeper than superficial cures can reach, and not entirely unwelcome. Most people think that mind flayers are soulless husks who feel nothing. I am glad you are not most people. is rebelling again. I need to focus. And so do you. Oh, you've changed places? decision. Sacrifices must be made after all. Especially if the old duke's fall means his rise. Hmm. Time and again, Will's plight reinforces my decision not to pursue the path of a warlock. It's one thing to make such a sacrifice in the pursuit of such a pact, but to do so in order to escape one. Truly. It leaves you with nothing. Why does El Minister have such faith in you? I've often asked myself the same question. I've never really found a satisfactory answer. You clearly see something in me that I can't. The wisdom and intelligence required to overcome almost insurmountable odds, perhaps? All the stupidity required to attempt it. I'll take it as a compliment either way. You don't get to be 13 centuries old without becoming a sound judge of character. And cheese, apparently. Do you regret not using the op when you had the chance? I regret many things in my life. Choosing to be here, intact and unexploded, is not one of them. Though the orb still seems to offer our best hope of destroying the brain, I retain some hope that another less costly solution can be found. For now, to have a few more days in your company, no, I wouldn't change a thing. Soldier? Nothing? Okay. The Emperor has offered us a special Deadpool. We'll become Persian mind players, but we'll get great powers in turn. Special tadpole? bit of a contradiction in terms, don't you think? I don't even want a regular one. You're talking about turning into what? A half squid? Not surprised you haven't tried it yourself yet. Hmm, I understand if we don't want to make use of it. We won't speak of it. <sighs> Thank the gods. Will, 
Gandalf sacrificed his own father. I hope freedom from the pact is worth it to him. I think that special thought pool the Emperor offered will increase our chances of success. I haven't even dared to use the more benign forms of illithid powers. Do you really think I'm eager to jump to the next step? You know what that offer truly entails, don't you? Become half a mind flayer, lose half of yourself. I don't want that. Okay. Mm, okay. What's up with you? Can you just go to a curse by the. Okay. Mm, 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 do we have. No, she has. I'm ready. Room of curse. Oh, get over here then. Tarchite the Vigor granted 20 temporary hit points by the Tarchite Codex and Elevating Magic. Have a lot okay. in my mind. And, well, in it. Hope you're keeping well, friend. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and you? Little something's on my mind. You smell very delicious, but I will not bite you. to get Mistra's attention was to learn how to reforge an artifact that once destroyed her. It's obvious when you stop to think about it. What do you think she wants to say? Well, I doubt it's an apology for asking me to die on her behalf. Whatever it is. If it's important enough to send Elminster, you can be damn sure she's serious. This is a conversation that's long overdue on both sides. I owe it to her to hear her out. Come what may afterwards. I agree. It's time we headed for the storm short tabernacle. Wherever it is, can I take it? No. Yeah, let's go. After you. Wherever it is. Things first, I wanna check on Frank. At the ready. How long does the pass before the trace work? Until longer. Is it? Oh, but it's a concentration spell. Folks got it. Didn't see it happen though, thank the gods. City's on to some proper sick bastards. And they've been partying. Oh, they've been getting rid of parents. Hmm. Intriguing. 
the humble home of Frank Pear Tree. Ooh. You, you will deal more damage. Or not. Uh, Let's move. We're lost. Did they save? Next time's the charm. Those wishing to face the Dread Lord's Tribunal and enter the Temple of Baal must slay the targets on this list and frame the corpses as a murder by the Cult of the Absolute. Bring the victim's hand as proof of the killing. Walk in blood. Yeah. The corpse regards you lifelessly. Why were it killed? The corpse remains silent. It does not know. What did your kill look like? Bastard dwarf red shirt. What were you doing when you died? Making me soup ruined now. Hmm. What, hap what happened to you? He was killed. How were you killed? Limbs locked up, then hand cut off. Where are you from? Basilisks. Barracks. Got injured. Discharged. The spell's power wanes. You can ask no more questions. Hmm. Wait, there's something more. You've been picking where you shouldn't be a tree. Placing the Lordlings fire spitters throughout my city. Disgusting. They leave no blood, there's no art to it at all. Just burnt ash and corpse cinder. I walk through your basement here as I pen this. It's rather large. Roomy. They would never find all the bits of you if I spread them out here properly. Basement? Seems simple enough. Oh, are we under investigation? Fist investigation underway. Stay back. Hatch. Wait. Hatch. Oh. That's why I didn't see it. What? What's hiding here? That corpse is huge. And is that a burning heart? The effigy of Yaga who burned his mortality. What use his heart? He thought himself a titan, but died whispering for his mother. Or in the red. Hmm. Oh. In front of the contracts and partners, I truly hope I had it sooner. One must choose which devil they deal with using utmost vigilance. Remember, devils are not only fiends, they're bastards. I once knew a man who asked for ultimate protection against his enemies from a devil of this, this pattern. He was transported into an impregnable iron fortress under deep underground, one without doors. So, pick and choose with cautions, friends. For matters of money, Creatures of minotaurs can best solve your woes. For matters of pleasure or pain, face the fiery folk of Fel... Felgetos. Hmm. Another step forward. My gratitude?
Careful, I'm bind. Nope. Should be easy. Short sword plus two. Hmm, so close. Isn't it better than what you have? Seven, twelve. Not really. We eight. We eight. It's the same. Not distance, necrotic damage, and you. Well ends. Not as bad as it could have. <laughs> That's an upgrade. Okay. Open up. Okay, so now that we have this <coughs> hand, where is it? We should <laughs> we should continue looking Let's for this. All right, because <coughs> they're gonna resurrect him. Wait, there's still something more. Taking in the view before continuing on our way. Of course. Um, it's really weird. It's not gone. Hmm? Shouldn't go wandering in dark alleys. Very dangerous of me. Gets people. Killed. It's not the dark here. On a half orc's finger, you notice an unusual ring. Heavy and with a strange symbol carved on its surface. Scurry away, good book, before I crash you. Okay, let's try looking closer. At the ring. 815. And I'm feeling lucky. You recall seeing this symbol on crates marked for Nine Fingers Keen, leader of the guild. The thug works for her. Oi! Stop staring! Start walking! Last chance! Mm. Plus a lot. Uh, yeah, this is the best. Shall I tell Nine Fingers your first Latin pass? She'll be very unhappy. You're here to see Nine Fingers? She didn't tell me. Always don't let anyone through, Tuscon. Never ears a list of special guests. Confusing. Come, I'll take you to the guild hall. Mm. Nine Fingers is inside. I can manage on my own. In you go. Before I change my oh, mind. Okay. Thank you. Well well. The fabled haunt of nine fingers keep. Never safe. visited before. I thought you'd got around. I always steer clear. If guild members started disappearing, people would start asking questions. More? All on the same side. Wow, look who it is! Glad to see you in the city. Hope you found plenty of coin in Ketterick's coffers. You're Ready bye. to do some business? How did you escape Moon Eyes? I survived the hells when Elturel fell. Compared to that, slipping out of Moonrise was child's play. Is this a guild business you're running here? Sure is. We work for Fetcher, handling what you might call pre-owned goods. Talk to Sticky. He'll cut you a deal. Ready to do some business? What are you up to this time? Oh, I've got a few ideas. I'll be running this whole place in no time. I'm glad she's fine. Fetcher isn't himself, so... I'm running the shop. You buying or selling? Maybe a bit of both. Show me what you've got. Ooh, and a nice cloak. 
while hiding the number you need to roll critical while attacking it just by one. That sounds nice. Give me this, give me those, never too many. Mm -hmm. What's Cape of the Red Prince, yeah. Thanks. Sometimes stuff we sell comes back around to us again. So watch yourself. Got me? Mm hmm. Um, I bought something out for myself, and this goes to camp. You have something better, right? So I have to. Is that blood? Well, maybe not. No, never mind. Six fifteen. That that one gives scorching ray. Can't give up now. Can't slow down. I have something to ask. Right. Which crew are you with? Bellbreakers, the children of Hor. The names ring familiar. Two of the many crews that make up the guild, a loose collective with ties to every criminal enterprise in the city's underworld. Mm, consider me an independent operator. In between scores, then. Oh, there's no shame in that. This Stone Lord business has even the bigger crews shutting up shop for a while. Fair warning. The Guildmaster wants no fraternizing with the Zentarim. They're here to work, not share war stories. They won't be much use to us if they're drinking and dicing when the Stone Lord kicks the door down. You sure sure the Stone Lord is going to attack? Well, whoever he is, he doesn't seem very keen on talking. He came out of nowhere and ate up half our turf in a ten day. So if you're speaking to the guildmaster, maybe step soft around the topic. Hmm? Okay, good to know. <laughs> I'm sorry, sweetie pie. I don't do requests, but toss me a few coppers, and I'll shoot you a saucy wink across the bar. Nice geek you've got here. Color me envious. It isn't half bad, is it? And this lot, very generous tippers. I'm sure you understand there's only room for one bard here, but I'll let you know if I need a day off. Hmm? Thank you. Um, where is the person we are looking for? Frankly, I don't remember the name already. Um, oh, no, meet with Mr. Oh, wait, what? Supposed to meet with someone. Hey. Doors have dark curtains across the mirror. No offense taken, I hope. Not necessarily. I haven't made up my mind about you yet. Mm hmm. Oh, now you think you're skin, right? It's an orphanage, Ukta. What would you have me do? Seize their toys as payment? Well, they fail to pay tribute. We should withdraw our protection, at the very least. And cede more ground to the Stone Lord. <laughs> you're not suggesting I yield a single inch of the city, my city, to this cult. I... We already look weak. If you're seen to be forgiving debts... I didn't say forgive. Seize the building. Are many children old enough? If they protect what's mine, we'll consider that a start on what's owed. Yes, Guildmaster. I... Excuse me! 
This is a private council. Keep your underpants clean, Uktar. We're playing host to a hero. You recall our reports of Kethrick Thorne. General of the Absolute. Champion of Merkel. Unkillable tyrant of Moonrise. Meet the one who killed him. Am I interrupting? Um, my friend precedes me. That, or you've been spying on me. Whichever one gives you the most comfort. The Guild is this city's first and last line of defense. It's only natural that we watch the gates for anyone interesting. I'd say you qualify. I already know the one thing about you that I need to. You've crossed paths with the cult's leadership before, and you're still standing. I mean to burn the Absolute from the face of my city. So if you mean to help, congratulations. We just became the best of friends. I ran into some of your facts. They're Rivington rats. Oh. Did you enjoy the encounter? I don't think they enjoyed it. <laughs> I have no doubt you gave them a good talking to. The rats usually keep a lid on their nastier notions, but with the Stone Lord business distracting me, some are starting to test the leash. All the more reason to be rid of the cult quickly, so I can remind my crews it's not a leash round their necks if they cross me. It's a noose. Why do I need the guild? I've been doing well enough without you so far. Mm. You have. But don't be so quick to bat away a helping hand. We find few enough of them in this city. The flaming fist can be bought. The harpers are scattered and the parliament of beers, well... They're just generally too inbred to be useful. The absolutes at our gate. And the guild are the only ones truly standing against it. I need information. Knowing what I know usually comes at a cost. But let's say we'll put it on your tab. How is it you know so much about the cult of the Absolute and its leaders? Simple enough. After Jahira warned me and then disappeared, I went nosing into the cult for myself. I could bore you with the details. How I found evidence of Gortash's projects, traced him to Orin the Red, and made a safe bet there was some dried out old necromancer to round out the three. Because it's always the dead, bloody three. Has been half gods who can't help but make their irrelevance everyone else's problem. There's more to. It then trusted it free. Oh. You've got some juicy little tidbit I haven't heard yet. <laughs> okay. Here goes nothing. Hey, I'm not willing to sell my information to just anyone, okay? I'm learning. Okay, let's get out of here. Uh, over here. Hmm. Yes. If at least I think so. See anything of yours? A humble You're specimen, you. aren't you? On occasion. we do with Orin? Mm. I have no idea what else we can do with this guy. He quite literally told us everything he knows. No, as much as he can. Are we supposed to take that? No. Did I not take any everything from him? The crossbow that I don't want. He's got nothing else. Left, left, no. right. Down. What are you gonna do? Arrest us. 
Okay, let's meet with Mistra. Just as Elminster promised. Mistra, goddess of the weave, mother of all magic. The old man wasn't lying. She's opened the summoning channel. Can't you feel it? Gail's right. The very air around the statue crackles with magic. It sets your teeth on edge. A stream of pure, undiluted weave. I only have to reach out, and it will carry me to Mistra, wherever she may be. An audience with your goddess can go wrong. I should know. But do whatever you feel is best, Gail. Time was, I'd have given my right arm for a chance to speak with Mistra again. <laughs> the left one, too. Maybe a knee. Well, you don't owe her so much as a fingernail. She asked you to blow yourself up. Hmm. Not the message one hopes to receive from a past lover. But her first love was always the weave. At best, I was a close second. When I pictured this moment, I thought I'd feel more in control. Yet, yeah, here I am, with palms sweatier than a bugbear's armpit. I always wonder what being nervous would feel like. I hate it. Of all the things to be nervous about, an audience with a goddess seems reasonable. You're kind to say so, but this is hardly my first time in Mistra's presence. It's more the matter of what I'm going to say to her. During my time locked away in Waterdeep, I prepared a quite comprehensive speech for her on the subject of our former relationship and the manner in which it ended. Alas, recent events have rendered the majority of it moot, so I'm going to have to improvise. Unless you have any words of wisdom to impart before I go. You're not taking me with you. The summoning channel Mistra has provided is one only I can enter. No matter how much I prefer not to face her alone. Don't give anything away. Just find out all she has to say. You'd make a fine three dragon anti player, you know? I think it's best I keep a cool head going into this. Approach it like a particularly high risk round of three dragon anti. I'll let Mistress show her flight, and then I can see how strong a chance we stand of winning the gambit. I'll only be gone for a matter of moments. The outer planes experience time quite differently to our own. Wait for me. Please. I actually really like the three dragon anti. It's a very nice game. Gale of Waterdeep. You look well. As do you. But I assume we're not here solely to exchange compliments. So why am I here? You discovered what lies at the heart of the Absolute, the Crown of Causes. And you disobeyed my instruction. Why? Because you had no right to ask that of me. You cast me out. Remember? You were my lover. My chosen. Yet still you know so little of me. 
The past cannot be undone with self-pity, nor can a future be forged. Only with the truth will you see the way ahead. The fragment of magic you tried to return to me was not of my creation. It was the Carsite Weave. It is a corrupted, half-born magic, wrought in the brief moment Carsus ascended to godhood. It hungers for power, just as he did, and it can never be sated. You unleashed something that would consume all magic in existence, and yet you thought only of preserving yourself. So that's what you're scared of. With the crown of Carsus reforged, I could take control of the Carsite Weave. You can no more control the Carsite Weave than a weather vane could control a storm. That it entered your body and consumed no more than your powers was a miracle. But we will not be granted another. The only reason the orb sleeps is because I have allowed it to feed on the true weave. A temporary measure, but one that will not be enough to save us. With each day that passes, the Elder Brain threatens to become a new kind of god. Its worshippers, a scourge of soulless illithids. If you will not use the orb to end this abomination, then you must find a way to separate crown and host. When you've done this, you must surrender the crown of Carsis to me. A great ask indeed. You've given me much to think on. As you always did. So be it. Follow the needle of your own wisdom. We shall see how truly it leads you. How did it go? Back on mortal soil once more. I can't believe I saw it. After all this time. How do you feel now you've done it? Relieved. Drained. Proud of myself for summoning the courage to go to her in the first place. And, if I'm being totally honest, a bit lightheaded. As if it wasn't enough to have seen her again. She didn't exactly summon me there for small talk. The Carsite Weave. Within me this whole time. I knew the orb was no ordinary ball of magic before it to be Carsus's malignant creation. Gods! How did I not see that? Well, it's all too easy to miss things when we are blinded by desire. Mm, true enough. There's a reason such unwitting heroes have been the backbone of lyric and legend for as long as both have existed. Even so, I was hardly some naive apprentice at the time. I considered myself an archmage, and yet was fool enough to be mistaken for a common conjurer. At least now I'm armed with the truth, and Mistress' expectations. It sounds like the door to redemption is open at last. All I have to do is... Walk through it, carrying the crown of Carsus. Then we need to take this chance. You deserve to be cured. Thank you. There aren't many I'd trust to stand beside me on such a journey. Fewer still who would do so because they believed I deserved such a chance. If I could promise you one thing in return for your faith in me, it's this. I will use everything in my power to ensure we defeat this evil i will not let you down now i believe we have a date with an elder brain to get to shall we well not quite yet but eventually yes um what else not yet sure not a murder target i still don't know how to deal with that um but 
for now I am gonna end this part here. So thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. <laughs>